Okay, I just started. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, today we are going to look at um, our preparation to lead. Right? We, we've been studying about worship teams and about um, you know the processes involved in worship ministry. Right? And, uh, and these are things that, of course, we can you know, take and apply uh, in our context, in our local churches, wherever whichever church we come from, and should it apply? You know, uh, not everything that we're looking at is applicable because of uh, maybe uh, the number of the size of the church or where it is culturally, etc. So, um, so that's the thing. So, but we can we can apply it. It's useful uh, wherever you know we uh, wherever there is you know a worship ministry as such. It's useful. So today, let's look at. Um, uh, we looked at auditions like last time and also preparing a roster, preparing a schedule. And it's it's good to have a monthly uh, roster or monthly schedule. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I shared uh, a typical roster that that we have here. Have you seen? Uh, no? Okay. Um, you, you, you might have seen the roster that we have here in uh, APC. You've you've seen it before, oh, okay, 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 yeah. So uh, anyway, I'll just um, share that on screen. Let me just what happened? All well. We have you've seen it. It has been shared with you. Okay. Anyway, uh, for the online class, I'll just uh, share. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So typically, uh, this is how the roster looks like um so we have all the five sundays and uh, you know this gives you who the worship leaders are for each of these locations and each of these sundays and also you know each location um, each church location it has it's further you know uh, divided into the team like what each person is doing the worship leader the keyboard player Acoustic guitar, electric guitar, etc. So, um, so this helps. It helps to organize. It helps to keep track of who's doing what, and um, and so it helps us not to be chaotic, not to be, you know, uh, result in any confusion. So, you know, there's no question of you know who, who's who's going to be doing, uh, you know, who's going to be leading this particular Sunday, and nobody has a clue. You know, we avoid all those um, all those things, right? So it really helps us to be organized. It helps the team to be organized. Like there are so many things that are connected to the worship leading or, or the church itself, right? Uh, the church service, if you want to look at that, um, the church service itself. There's so many things connected, like the the uh, the people who are in charge of the sound, the people who are in charge of ushering, um, the, the everything you know is connected. The, the associate pastor or the pastor of that particular location who's going to be there. So. A uh, whole lot of things are interconnected, and this helps everyone who is part of, uh, who's serving in the church to be prepared, right? Or those who are in the media to be prepared with the songs, those who are in the worship team to be prepared to practice and prepare. They know that, okay, this is where I am on this particular date. This is where I am. This location is where I am, and so on. So I need to prepare, etc. So uh, this really helps, right? So. Um, Today, but today let's look at um, individually and also as a team preparing to lead, preparing to lead in worship ministry. Okay, so we know that um, we've seen that worship is a spiritual activity, right? Though it is involving, you know, it is heavily, uh, intensely physical in terms of uh, you know uh, all the expressions of worship and in terms of 
in terms of singing, in terms of playing music, and uh, everything that's involved. You know, maybe that's flag, maybe that's you know, whatever dance. You know, all that is intensely physical. But we know at the core of it, it's a, a spiritual activity, right? Because John chapter four, the Lord is very clear uh, when he's explaining about worship, and he and and he gives a very de good definition that this is what it is that those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth right so it is out of inamos being as led by the holy spirit and out of truth which is um, you know as described in the word of god so um, so that is something that we understand right and worship is also something that requires uh, the holy the leading the anointing of the holy spirit right because it's the anointing of the holy spirit and the presence of god which really makes a difference right so um so that is something that we also prepare for that is also something that we receive from right so the bible talks about the fact that we can be filled every day every moment to receive and be filled by the holy spirit right be filled with the spirit is what we see the exhortation and uh, don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit right and we see that connection uh, being filled with the spirit the overflow of that resulting in uh, you know in, in lifting up of psalms and uh, spiritual songs unto the Lord, right? We see that. Um, let's let's turn to that. Um, okay, uh, Ephesians chapter five and verse seventeen. Okay, um, sorry, verse eighteen. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So you see that, you know, this aspect of worshiping with songs and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in our heart to the lord worshiping the lord with our heart you know in our innermost being with our spirit there's an overflow of that which comes because of being filled with the spirit so we know that you know that's an important aspect one is if we understand and we're aware of the fact that it's a spiritual activity we aware we understand and we are aware and we are dependent on the infilling on the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? So, um, so when we worship God, what happens? There are quite a few things that happen uh, because we worship the Lord, right? When we come to Him, uh, when we worship Him, we know we are commanded to worship Him. We know we are created, designed to be in awe of Him, to worship Him, and we know that. When we worship Him, we experience the presence of God. And when we worship and we praise Him, He reigns. Uh, he's enthroned on the praises of His people. And therefore, you know, we experience victory over our enemies and you know, because He reigns. Right? He, he reigns victoriously. Uh, and so we experience that as well. Right? So I um, just want to share a little bit about uh, what happens in the presence of God. I know that we have seen this before, but um, just wanted to... Um, I'll share very quickly about that as well. Um, okay. In the presence of God, right, there are several things that happen. I know we have, we have, re maybe you've read the book, The Presence of God. I'm just going to share um, uh, something from that book, right, from um, maybe chapter two. Just a few thoughts, okay? In the presence of God, why we should esteem, value, and prepare, and expect, you know, the um, the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, um, when we worship, right? So um, let me just share that with the class. Um, okay. So we see that in the presence of God, we are transformed, or there is change, change for the better, right? Second uh, Corinthians three and verse eighteen. This is what it says: "But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory." just as by the spirit of the lord okay so there is change there is transformation and uh, yes we know that change happens transformation happens in different ways by the renewing of our mind but this is also one 
aspect of change or transformation it says that when we behold as in the mirror the glory of the lord when we when we you know uh, expect and and uh, walk in or walk into the presence of god or become aware of the presence of god the presence of god changes beholding as in a mirror the glory of god we are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory so it's it's amazing that happens that there is um, just by being in the presence of god there is change happening like we know that um, moses spent his time on the mountain in the presence of god uh, extended time and he and he came down and his face was shining right? there was a visible physical uh, transformation that was there so we are changed you know there's transformation that happens there is also conviction right? there is conviction of sin there is conviction of righteousness there is uh, deep conviction in our hearts because of the presence of god right um, the psalmist when he was convicted by that word which came because of the prophet nathan that word convicted him and and that's why you know he says in psalm 51 create in me a clean heart right and renew the steadfast spirit within me then he cries out and said do not cast me away from your presence he valued the presence of god and in this case even though there was great conviction a conviction of sin conviction of what a wrongdoing he had done he still values the presence of god right so when there is conviction conviction is not um it's not a comfortable thing right conviction is not a kind of comfortable thing you especially especially when when you're convicted of something that is wrong you know, you've done something wrong and then you're convicted of it it is not a pleasant thing right it's an uncomfortable thing that but then you know that it's for it's for our good that we are convicted when we when we act on that conviction we know that it's uh, it's going to bring about change right uh, and so the same thing here he's saying he's valuing the presence of god he's saying despite the conviction he's saying do not cast me from your presence o oh lord right so it could be certain things that we have overlooked in our lives it could be certain things that uh, you know we have maybe maybe we don't be treated lightly but the conviction of the presence from the presence of god the conviction of god uh, you know in our hearts um, that is something that we cannot shake away right uh, well it could be something very simple it could be something you know it could be very significant things but that conviction from god uh, you know it's it's there it grips our heart right and and it can happen in a, in a moment when we worship in the presence of god right the other thing that we see is brokenness Right? there are times in where when we are completely you know our pride our hurt our, our pride our hardness of heart everything is broken right there's nothing it's no no reasoning could actually bring us to that place where there is brokenness which happens because simply because of the presence of god and and that's something that um, that is amazing you know, that happens because of see uh, because of our, our worship of god right there is joy we experience the joy of the lord we are renewed in our strength uh, isaiah 40 talks about that says that uh, you know, those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength right isaiah 40 verse 31 those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint okay so all this uh, and and refreshing and and the supernatural works of god you know everything happens in the presence of god right so so we see that uh, you know as a worship ministry or as a worship team that we prepare for this we prepare to um, uh, experience the presence of god and that's our focus right um, okay sorry one second yeah Okay, so in preparing to lead, we here are some practical things, right? Knowing that all this, these are the benefits of just drawing near to God, knowing that these are the things that a person can experience in the presence of God. So how can I prepare and how can I how can the team prepare? Right? We go back again to the 
fundamentals of uh, uh, of the life of a believer right so we we see that the 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 fundamentals of the life of a believer you know how a believer should walk how a believer should live you know that's it doesn't change right when it comes to ministry it doesn't change it just gets a little more intense than before right so when we see a personal life of devotion a personal life of worship right a personal life of worship meaning that in our personal time when we worship the lord when we worship the lord with our words with our song with uh, you know with, with with all our hearts personally rather than uh, uh, in preparation for leading corporately or ministering corporately you know that's the same thing with ministry as well right our personal time with god uh, in private in secret and uh, that adds as a preparation for ministry and we minister out of the overflow of that is what comes public ministry right so same thing here that a personal life of worship during the week okay matthew 5:19 talks about the 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 fact that we we are those who are those who do and then teach are called great in the kingdom of god the lord jesus said those who do this and then teach you know so to personally experience to personally do it and then teach that right the second thing that we see is consecration okay our personal life to live a life of consecration you know what does consecration mean yeah making a choice to walk in a set, set apart in a manner that is set apart right set apart for god which means that um, our choices our lifestyles get affected you know affected for the better actually right? so we don't uh, when we say i'm living a consecrated life so there are certain things that you don't indulge in there are certain things that you don't get into you know you stay out of because we live a consecrated life okay let's look at uh, a couple of scriptures um looking at james chapter 4 okay um it says draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded okay so a, a consecrated life is also a single mindedness a single minded life it leads us away from all double mindedness uh confusion to be single, single to have single minded focus uh on the lord and on and the things that concern him right um so a life of consecration where there is um there is constant cleansing and there is constant refining of our thoughts of our attitudes and which brings us to focus so that is what we see you know cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded right so a life of cons- one aspect of it you know we know that we think of you know sin we think of uh, um, you know uh, not indulging the things of the flesh etc but consecration is also coming to a place of being focused not having a, an attitude of double mindedness right okay the third thing is to again this is again all these are basic things we know to have a consistent prayer personal prayer life right uh, to make sure that there is a consistent consistent meaning there is frequent and uh, and it's it's at regular intervals right that is what it means consistent personal prayer life we know that it changes us and it increases or we draw closer to god we understand what god wants uh, we understand his heart better uh, and it's a progressive thing right and we also become sensitive to the leading of god you know, that's that's the thing you know prayer we know prayer is you know talking to god and we know prayer is bringing our needs to him and you know prayer like intercession is you know praying for the needs of others um but when we when we, we we know that prayer is also intimacy with god right it's just being in the presence of god it is opening our hearts to god and hearing from him 
and very important aspect of prayer, which increases our sensitivity to the presence of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Which is, we are, why are we looking at all this? We're looking at, you know, these are things that are important as preparation for worship ministry, as preparation to lead in worship. And so we become sensitive to the prompting of God, the gentle nudges of God, what he wants done, right? So, which is important. So a pers life of personal prayer. And fourthly, of course, anointing of the Holy Spirit, which we saw earlier, where we come um, expectantly and we come for the refreshing and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to lead us and to really rise above our own weaknesses, our own circumstances, um, our own challenges, and to minister. Right. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We know the anointing breaks the yoke. We know the anointing refines us. We know the anointing transforms us. Right. Uh, so we receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit and as a team, as individuals, and prepare for the uh, worship ministry. Right? So we see that these are these are things that we need to do. Some practical things would also be, you know, like we saw, um, even while preparing, you know, we know we worship in song. We know we worship with the word of God. So personally spending time uh, with those songs, right? with those the words of the songs, right? Many times we realize that, okay, only when we start using those songs in worship, we realize, oh, there's so much in this song. There is this, I didn't see that. This uh, this truth, I didn't even notice it, right? So, which means when we prepare, when we go through the words of the songs, you know, um, the, the Lord gives us a revelation. The Lord gives us emphasis or prompts us on what he wants to do with certain sections of the song right if you look at the song as a you know as a, a way or a, a, as a window or a vehicle through which people actually can see god people can actually uh, you know uh, experience the characteristic of god the beauty of god when we spend time going through the words of the song the holy spirit actually opens up and gives revelation, connects certain things to scripture, even as we go through the words of the song. So one way of personally preparing is to sit with the words of the song and to sit before the Lord and say, God, you know, you speak. Right? Um, and this is something just so valuable because um, uh, there are some times when the Lord says, okay, here, this is what I actually want to accomplish in, in this uh, service or in the worship time. You know, this section of the song, this bridge of the song is something that I want you to stay on, right? I want you to emphasize this, or th because I'm going to do something, something special, something, you know, something powerful in that moment. So, uh, yes, as we are leading, we can be sensitive, but even as we are preparing, as we sit with the words of the song, especially when it comes to musicians, right? Musicians don't necessarily spend time with the words of the song. I said, no. Um, you know, that song in, they'll say this, that song in A minor, I think that song in G minor, you don't remember, remember that song, you know, it goes like this and they sing the tune because no clue about the title of the song, no clue about, you know, uh, what that, that needs to, uh, <coughs> sorry, no, oh, where are the lyrics, so, because uh, very, very uh, focused on the tune and the melody and how to play it, uh, which is important, but what really enables a musician to express it well is to know the heart of the song right what is it is it about something tender something holy is it about something that is uh, you know victorious triumph and so that gives gives you the heart to express it in the right way right so um, so that is uh, another thing to sit with the lyrics sit with the words of the song right okay so um as, as part of uh, a worship ministry and as part of ministering in worship, one important thing which really is helpful for the team and for the worship leader and for everyone you know, in worship ministry is to review. Okay. To review what went right to what went wrong, how things could have been better. So, you know, some questions that we typically ask you know, this is not an exhaustive list, but some questions that we ask ourselves 
as we minister in worship is to ask this question, you know, ourselves personally and to the team, you know. Hey, did we encounter, enjoy, experience the presence of God as we played together, right? As we led in worship, did we, you know, it, we know it's a very subjective question, right? Um, because we know God's presence is there, but did we really experience the manifest presence of God? Okay, that's, so, so this is a question just to open up this awareness for every team member. Right? Otherwise, people come, okay, I played the song well, I sang well, I did it well, without any mistakes, and and that's it. Right? So to, to ask this question, you know, maybe people who are new, joining new, people who have been there for many, many years, for both of them, it's it'll be re relevant. Hey, did we experience God's presence? Did we en encounter God's presence? So the answer could be, Yes, no, I'm not sure, I don't know what you're talking about. So then that's an opportunity to talk about the presence of God. That's an opportunity because the vision of the worship ministry is to please God's heart in, in worship, right? in uh, un, 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 unhindered worship, and to encounter the manifest presence of God. So, so this is something that we are after go, pursuing going after our heart is on that so at the end of it if that did not happen so then you need to ask you know why then there'll be you know there'll be responses like you know i was very distracted today or my mind was on other things you know there were some technical glitches like you know this was not happening i could not hear myself or it was too loud or uh, and things like that you know some some physical practical things which actually hindered with the spiritual and then you understand okay i need to you know set those things right or you know even if these things are happening i need to rise above these distractions right so uh, things like that we ask it's good to ask did we experience the encounter the presence of god secondly you know did we did god lead us in a new way today right for example, you know, I remember many years, and it stayed with me for a long time. Um, this was um, many years back, and we were a small team, and we were just leading worship. and And I remember that whole session of worship, maybe even you know, thirty five minutes of it, was feeling very dry. It was as if one battle, you know, it's like push, pushing against a wall, like nobody's uh, entering into worship. And personally, also, we're just feeling it very dry, very difficult. Right? People are not responding. People are maybe lethargic and tired. And even the team is not really enthused, you know. And uh, so at the end of it, I, I just realized that, uh, okay, we finished something and finished a song. And at the end of it, something unplanned happened where the drummer just played a role. And the entire team just started playing musically. Okay, so... It was not planned. We are almost reaching the end of the set, and the drummer plays this plays his role, and we all started playing just the music part of the song, right? The chorus or something. And suddenly, amazingly, you know, this presence of God just flooding the place, and uh, as we just couldn't explain it, right? So we see that okay, God is leading us in a new way, and we and we just stayed on for some more time, but it was something. Something precious, something that was beautiful that happened towards the end. Now I don't know why that dryness was there. There could be many reasons, you know, the beginning. But it was something that we were trying to push through, push through, and then it happened, you know, right at the end. So God leading in a wonderful way, like in a new way, um, during that worship time. Right. Another question to ask. Okay, now it's it's about the team. So we're asking as a team. But another question to ask is, hey, did you notice the congregation enjoying or experiencing the presence of God? Okay. So how do we how do we know that, right? Because we're seeing just the outside. People could be some person could be just you know sitting like that, but actually might be intensely in, in worship. We don't know, right? Or some somebody could be literally jumping and you know doing all those things, but. We don't know what is in their heart, right? So we, we can't. But to the extent that we can observe naturally, you know, did we see people engaged in worship? Right? Engaged in worship, engaged in um, 
uh, in experiencing the presence of God. Right? Sometimes we can see, you know, we can see tears, we can see laughter, we can see, you know, all those things which are physical. You know, people are surrendered, they're kneeling down, they are raising their hands, and maybe there's spontaneous applause, applauding the Lord. You don't, you don't, you didn't really tell them to do it, but they're doing that, right? And uh, people are engaging in spontaneous, you know, praise and just, you know, you, you didn't exhort much, but they're just spontaneously just you know praising god and worshiping god and doing all that and singing songs singing in tongues and all that is happening so you know that if there's something happening you know people are encountering uh, the presence of god right so so did you notice that so why are we asking these questions because we're just reviewing what happened right? reviewing what happened every sunday not to find find fault but really you know how can we improve and did we actually set out to accomplish uh, what we wanted to right in that worship service right in that uh, in the time of ministry did we really accomplish right so other practical aspects would be you know did we play well together did was there any conscious mistakes that we did you know maybe the start of it maybe this you know how we ended the song um you know what did we not do well Right? What is it that we can correct the next time? So, so everybody, you know, just gives their honest opinion. Okay, this is where I missed. You know, I I shouldn't have. This is where I missed. This is where I played wrong. Or, you know, this is where because you know that when it can be a hindrance, right? It can be a hindrance to those who are there. So, what can we do to correct? Right. So, so this team review is is done. <clears throat> This team review is done in every every location, every time people lead. And uh, either it's at the end of the service, people just stand around and you might have seen that, you know, people just talking and asking questions, or it could be done on the WhatsApp group itself online. Um, so the worship leader further shares this on the worship leaders group. So whoever's leading the worship ministry gets to see, okay, in all these five locations, okay, this is a roster. These are the five locations, or, or whatever n number of locations, and these are the services, and and this is the feedback. You know, this is what happened during the you know service, um, difficulties, challenges, you know, uh, praise points, everything is reviewed and shared, and this happens every week. So this helps helps the team to grow, helps the teams to know that what is important and what is uh, what is not. Right? What are primary things? What are secondary issues? Right? What are things that are at the core of it? Are fo what we need to focus on actually, and also, you know, what are some difficulties, some challenges that we should, you know, uh, rise above? Right? Any questions? Yeah. Anything? <clears throat> those, those who lead in worship. Lead the team. Nothing. Okay, no questions. Fine. Okay, so okay, okay. <clears throat> also, just uh, one small question. Like, yeah. when we are leading worship, so that time, like, uh, is it okay? Like, can we go to one song, like, uh, for maybe uh, if we are leading for one hour? So is it okay? Can we go one song or two song? Like I've had some worship leader. So like they said, don't repeat again and again, again and again. So mm. what is like, is it okay to go or uh, you yeah. have to choose like for that? Yeah. So th that, that is again, depending on um, like what God is doing. Okay. Well, spiritually to be sensitive to what the Lord is doing, right? To be aware of what is happening. Right? There are times when, yeah, it, it has happened. Like where maybe we just sing one song, maybe we just sing you know two songs for the entire time duration. Um, but that doesn't mean that every time it has to be like that, right? So when we repeat certain things, what does repetition accomplish? You might have you know repeated things, right? Especially when you are learning alphabets, the teacher said, "Okay, A." You said, "A, A for, A for whatever." You said it over and over. Every class, you know, you have to shout it out literally. And so, repetition helped to learn. 
repetition help to settle things in memory right so repetition does that so maybe there is a spontaneous song or a prophetic song that is being released and so this repetition you know really gives emphasis especially you know you realize that okay maybe you've sung the chorus once maybe you sung it twice but the third time you suddenly realize what you are singing that is when you are actually engaged in what you are singing right otherwise maybe you sang the words but it was just coming from there you know from but then you it's coming from your heart now so repetition helps right helps to remember helps to engage right uh, but what we should not do is repetition for the sake of repetition repeating certain things for the sake of you know a, this section of the song i've always repeated 10 times so i have to repeat it you know it's not like that so so it's not uh, you know for the sake of repeating it for the sake of you know if i repeat it many times it will be spiritual uh, no nothing like that so we just need to be sensitive and do it and see and also be aware of what is happening like people's responses uh, are also something that matters right if you've lost people if people are not engaged then if you're going to repeat it it's it's not going to help you know they are not engaging right so it's better not to do that right so yeah so that's the thing repetition helps uh, it has its benefits and also spiritually maybe god is emphasizing certain things just stay there uh, you you feel the presence of god you know that you know god is breathing something on this it could be just two lines three lines whatever god is doing something on that um so it's better to stay not to move right uh, yeah so those are some things and also the other thing is not to crowd a worship set with too many songs like let's say if you got 30 minutes 40 minutes to pack in with some nine songs 10 songs it's like you know sometimes we do that we sing one song you know we just sang it once and moved to the next song song um, that is also you know not really good so we need to stay we need to linger uh and you know, because we're gazing at the you know at god at at the and who he is and and what he's done etc so we need to take some time to just stay so it's best to not crowd a thing pack in a worship set with too many songs right yeah <clears throat> okay so so these are some things for us to um you know for us to think about review feedback it always helps right sometimes the feedback come come from from the leadership from the pastor uh, sometimes from the congregation you know uh, sometimes people say okay uh, just things like the physical environment or, you know it's too loud or <clears throat> you know the drums is too loud and all those things you know kind of feedback these also are helpful right to to change to improve um, yeah yeah chill yeah, pastor. Sometimes, like uh, while reading words, uh, leading worship, like uh, we felt like very nice. Feel, feel nice. We felt like we led okay. We did okay. Nice. There's God presence and all. But uh, what happened in once, like in our place, from uh, uh, feedback came from the church, uh, pastor. Okay. And it was very disappointed. Like you know, I see. Uh, like for some, like we are from Nepali church. We have Nepali church. And uh, like uh, we sung Hindi songs. Okay. So, but uh, we used to sing every song in our church. So right. it's up to like worship leader what he's choosing. So what happened is like uh, after uh, the worship, uh, she just uh, came and like told the worship leader like, and the worship leader totally like you know disappointed. Mm. Like he like, uh, like he felt like uh, what is this? So what does the pastor come and say after this? Yes, she, she told like, uh, "What do you lead worship?" Oh, there's no. You should choose at least some uh, Nepali songs, and I didn't feel anything. Oh, so. presence, but uh, it was not that uh, good only. But uh, everyone had the but this statement make the person very low. Discouraged. So how to overcome with that after this? Yeah, because it's happened with every worship leader, right? Mm. Somehow, on the other, sometimes we, even though we did nicely, maybe, but sometimes feedback come opposite. Mm. We felt sometimes when we felt like uh, today, maybe I did some mistake. That time people came and say, "Wow, nice." <laughs> and sometimes we felt, "Oh, there is presence of God." But that time people come and say, "Like, what you did?" <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, like disappointed sometimes. Correct. We felt so bad, like. Yeah. Oh, so how to overcome with this? Yeah, the thing is to 
see one has to open feed welcome feedback okay and we know sometimes it can be critical it can be harsh and sometimes it can be very you know uh, very nice compliments so be prepared for both that's one thing okay when we, we there will be feedback be prepared for both you know the maybe and the thing is if there is even a few small percentage of truth in what they're saying we can work on it okay so not to take it personally and be offended by it right um so that's one thing you know, like uh, we should not be offended even though sometimes you know people might say in an angry manner say what did you know or you know they might be very upset or it's a total waste of time you know um so we should uh, we should actually be able to separate the you know the tone of their voice and anger and everything uh, emotion and what you look at you listen to what they are saying right so if we do that yes we we hurt you know sometimes you put in your best effort and you feel hurt just go back to the lord Just go to the Lord because He is the one to whom you address the whole thing, right? So go to the Lord and say, "Lord, I did my best, uh, but if there's anything that I need to learn from this, uh, if there's something that I'm, I I need to let go of, uh, you know, please help me." And also, you know, pray for the person who shared the feedback. You know, I received some crazy feedbacks. Like, um, like one particular person came and said, um, "Hey, why did you wear that T-shirt?" Okay, so this was another, <laughs> you know, another place where I was ministering, and then. and i'm thinking you know what t-shirt did i wear what it was something it was not a round neck it was something like what you're wearing with the collar and all that so she said no no it's very inappropriate you should not have and the thing is we didn't have a dress code at that time you know uh, in that church where i was so things like that so then i realized okay initially i was very angry i said how dare she say that <laughs> you know <clears throat> why can't she just you know close her eyes and worship the lord but then <clears throat> you know i just realized that okay You know, senior person and whatever. I said, okay, fine. So I just decided that uh, in that church, I won't wear a you know T-shirt like a thing because it's not helping her. So I said, okay. But initially, was I upset? Yes. So, you know, trivial things. How can they say this? And and there have been times when you know, uh, like uh, people also uh, did not really esteem the worship time. you know because there was no revelation understanding of what worship was in that particular church you know it was like more like a uh, okay 10 minutes of singing these young people will come and do something and you know, we'll tolerate it and then we'll begin the service you know it was like that uh, that's a real thing this is you know something we are tolerating so when we experience that we are bound to be disappointed because you putting in effort you're praying etc but don't take it personally right so that's the thing uh, because then we can get offended and then that offense can actually prevent us from doing greater things for god you know that we just stuck in that offense stuck in that bitterness and uh, so we don't want that right we want our heart to be clean and pure before god our conscience to be clean and clean okay. so just go to the lord and deal with it uh, as soon as possible and the lord will provide the healing the freedom and then you can just move on right and also that is a lesson for us as leadership if we are giving feedback to give it in a constructive way not to break the person but to tell the person hey this was this could be changed you know you need to do it um to give it in a constructive way so that the person understands it and works on it right? and yeah, so that's a lesson for us also yeah like this to it yeah but uh, this happened to like my experience like on our worship team first meeting like there was on last song it went big flop okay so what happened after the service the almost the like organizers of that meeting it was a four days meeting okay uh, the organizers came and round among us mm. and these guys had like is a group of people start shouting like what you guys are doing uh. so like and our team went very deep like mm. it should not be done and i was in part of that song mm. i said to like pastor okay from tomorrow i want to do worship so mm. that uh, <laughs> uh. the situation was very deep how to tell to the team like um, like that time i can't say okay so the team was not there team was, team was also there 
and the others organize everybody yes, yes, yes. and they were all saying oh, yes, this song should have should not have been whatever every church congregation was against us oh okay we are a different team oh i see oh you're visiting and you're ministering and then this happened. okay mm. and, but next day it was like you know uh, work of god is happened the presence of god was there but on that day like i decided i won't lead worship um, my sister is okay i was not going to come to worship like, i can't um, do uh, because the people are saying like this so how to maintain the team discipline like okay, mm. in this type of situation yeah so the thing is uh, yeah so it's not a one day thing so which means we need to have a culture of feedback and review so that is what it is you know it's not like um, we decide when we actually face it we prepare for it beforehand like, like how we prefer prepare for auditions and you know how we going to uh, integrate people select people integrate people into the team so we prepare beforehand okay to to have this kind of a system in place right where there is review there is openness and in case you know people you receive a feedback that is negative okay so this is how we handle it we are going to handle it right so you prepare before and have a culture of that so it doesn't come as a surprise it doesn't come as something that will derail the whole thing you know where people are like um oh, and i cannot continue with this anymore where people are growing and also they come to a place of strength spiritually emotionally and maturity to say i can handle it right but yes you know there are times when it's 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 good to say okay you take a break <laughs> just settle things you know i know you know emotionally you are very upset and stirred up and all that just take a break you know for some time and then come back and you're refreshed and during the break also we kind of help the person so like talk to them and you know about it and it's not the end of the world it is just one one service you know? we can always get back bounce back and but these moments are very helpful for us you know we learn a lot uh, there's a lot of internal strength that we get when we overcome these situations right yeah okay so we'll stop here take a break and then come back